Today we're going to start part A of the AP cell division lab. So you guys should have this document in front of you. You should have printed this off or downloaded it to your device um, so that we can use that. These are the instructions for part A. As far as materials and what we're going to use today, it's pretty simple. Um, I've got my paper. This is what we're going to use to draw. So it's just a piece of computer paper. Um, I've got a couple colored pencils. We've got a pink and a purple, uh, a pencil to do our drawings. The slide that we're going to be using is fish blasto disc. It's, it's fish blastula. These are egg cells that are dividing very rapidly through the cell cycle. And you can see all the little dots. Each one of those dots is a different uh, blastula or hollow ball of cells. So that should give us a lot of cells to look at. Um, we do have our fancy microscope. You can see right there. We're going to be using, um, I don't use the super low power, but this is a four. We don't use that one in, in AP. We start off with the yellow banded objective right here and the power is on this side. So I'm gonna kind of come over here. That's a 10. You can see it through there. That's the yellow one where my finger is right there. That's a 10X. And then we're gonna use the high power, which is a 40X. This one right here that has the blue band at the top of it. So our low power, one more time, is 10X. That's the yellow band. Our high power is 40X. But don't forget the eyepiece also magnifies. It has a 10X objective. You can see it right there. So if we're using the 10 with the eyepiece and we're gonna be on low power, which is 10, we have to multiply 10X for this times 10X for this. So our total magnification is gonna be 100 times, which means if we're on high power, the 40, then our total magnification is 10 times 40, which gives us a 400 times uh, multiplication. So we're going to, uh, for this lab, I want you guys to um, look, why well, you're not doing it, I'm doing it, uh, but the kids that are in class are using the 40 to do the drawings. So you're gonna have 400 times magnification in, in which your drawings are finished on. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is on the lab sheet, okay, this is uh, part A, by the way, we're gonna have part B and part C that we'll partake in next week. Uh, but I drew a diagram for you right here. That's how I want you to um, organize your paper. So I did a model for you, okay? I would like you to use in the upper left-hand corner, and this is landscape, by the way. Can you tell that's landscape? In the upper left-hand corner, please use a pen for this. You're gonna put your name, date, and period. So use a pen for that so I know it's your authentic work. Then for the rest of it, you can use a pencil or you can use a pen for titles and labeling, but the actual drawing, I want everybody to use a pencil, okay, for the drawing, but everything else you can label in pen and you can do your titles in total magnification um, in, in pen or pencil, like whatever your choice. Okay, so we're gonna look for phases uh, of interphase. We're gonna put in this first quadrant, prophase, prometa. We have a meta, an ana, and then this one's gonna be telophase with cytokinesis. Now at the bottom of every quadrant, I generally like you to put total magnification. So I always go total mag equals, and we're drawing, like I said, on 400X. So you need that below every picture. Okay, so get your paper set up. And while you're doing that, um, I'll get everything else ready so we can start focusing the image. Okay, so we're ready now to find some cells, some fish blastula cells or blasto disc. We're ready to find them under our microscope. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna make sure that this is on low power. That's the yellow band, it's 10X. I want to put my stage using the, this is a course adjustment knob. I wanna put it as low as it can go. See how it's moving up and down? So it's down as far as it can go. I'm gonna come over here turn the switch on. Oh, it's already plugged in, by the way. I plugged it in. We're gonna turn the switch on and we should get some light. And you see it there. You can see it through the light source at the bottom and it's coming through the stage. So we have power, we have light. We're now gonna take our slide. And this one's pretty good because usually you have to hold it up to the light. I usually have kids go like this to try to find the circles, but this one is really easy. So we're gonna put it on the stage Okay, this is a stage clip. These are mechanical stage clips, much nicer than what you probably are used to. We put the slide in place like that, let the stage clip hold it, but now I need to make sure that my little circles, those fish blasto discs, I wanna make sure that they're centered above the light that's coming through the stage. So this microscope has fancy, look at this, these are mechanical stage knobs that will move 
the slide back and forth. Look what happens when I move that, isn't that cool? Or the top one moves it that way. So I'm gonna center that in the field of view. Looks pretty good right there. See how I can see the circles, the little dots are right above that field of view. And now I'm going to only use, cause I'm in, on 10 X, I'm gonna only use the course adjustment knob, this big knob, and I'm gonna raise the stage up as I'm looking through until I can see something. Okay, so I found it on 10X, or really it's 100 times. This is going to be really hard to do, but I'm gonna try to hover my camera over the field of view. Don't draw anything from this, but I'm gonna just show you what I see. You might, once you get it in focus, or once I get it in focus, you may wanna push pause on the video, cause it's gonna keep going in and out. Hang on, there we go. Okay, look at that. So that's low power. So that giant pink circle is a cluster of a ton of different individual cells in there. I don't know if you can tell, but there's little white spaces in between. There's probably a couple of hundred cells in that one field of view. So what I wanna do now is I wanna switch it to high power so I can see the cells a little bit better. So I want you to watch what I'm gonna do. I am not touching either of these focus knobs right now. I know that it's perfectly in view because I can see it. So I'm gonna slowly take this and turn it. And even though it looks really close, watch this. I'm gonna turn it. It looks like it's gonna hit. It will not hit if it was focused on low. So I'm gonna go ahead and snap it in place. There it is, it snapped in. And to fine tune it, I am only going to use the fine adjustment knob. If I am on 40X, that's high power, I never, ever, ever wanna to touch this uh, course adjustment knob because I run the risk of running the stage into the, into the lens and then cracking my objective lens. So I'm on the 40X, which means 400 times, I wanna see if I can use my fine adjustment and fine tune this. Okay, so I have it focused on high power, we're ready to go. Now you are like last time, you're gonna have to push pause whenever I get this focused because this is what you're gonna use to make your drawings. Okay, hang on. Oh, this is beautiful. Okay, what I'd like to show you right here, if I can keep it still enough, hang on, I've gotta tilt it a little bit. Just one sec. Okay, you're gonna to wanna to push pause right here so that you can see these in the field of view. All right, one thing I'll tell you, look at the end of the pointer. The one that's at the end of the pointer is a classic telophase and cytokinesis. Hopefully you can see the two areas at opposite sides of the cell. Hang on, let me see if I can find it again. This is so hard to do. All right, well, I'm gonna make my drawing and I'm gonna show you a couple things. Okay, so this is my sketch. Don't take this for like full credit because I didn't really put a lot of detail in this. I just wanted to give you the idea that when you draw your pictures and your quadrants, and by the way, I drew this one first because that's the one that stood out to me. So as you're looking at the pictures, you can like find one and put it in the appropriate quadrant. But the main thing for me, a couple of uh, rules for labeling. I'm gonna go back over here. This is something that I've taught you guys before, but we wanna make sure that you're using the rules of how to label, which are right here. This is drawing and labeling. All drawings should be done in pencil, no pens or markers. You may label in pen, blue or black ink. Use colored pencils for coloring and shading, always according to true color. Drawing should be large enough to be to be able to see the details. I think that's pretty good. I would say take up about half the available space in that quadrant. Okay, then we wanna make sure we label to the right of the drawing using a ruler and um, try not to cross any lines. Okay, so for example, if I was gonna use this ruler and I'm labeling, let's say the cell membrane. Okay, if I start right here and I bring my line across like this, and I use that for cell membrane. The key is if I'm then gonna label cleavage furrow, I don't wanna take my line and come straight across. I probably wanna go up and over. So I'm gonna use my ruler and go up with a line 
like so. If I go up with that and then I go out to the right, and I'm not using my ruler right now just for time purposes, but if I go up and I go out to the right, don't pay attention to my non-ruler drawn line, then I wanna make sure that there's like an imaginary line right here, so my next label is gonna go right there and it kind of lines above or below the cell membrane, so I would put cleavage furrow right there. Okay, now pay attention to this. When you look at the list of structures to label, and I've highlighted them right here, I want you guys to see that for the first two bullets, you're gonna label one or the other on these two. So the first one says chromatin. So what you have to do is you have to know based on my lecture, based on your notes, when would chromatin be available? Like, are we gonna see chromatin in interphase, prophase, prometa, meta, ana, telophase, cytokinesis? Like which phase is up here, according to what you've learned in the, in the unit, which phase or phases would it be visible, the DNA, as chromatin? So if it's visible as chromatin, then that's the word that you're gonna use. If it's visible as a chromosome, and your two choices for that are sister chromatids or daughter chromosomes, then you're gonna use the word chromosome and then in parentheses put sister chromatids or put daughter chromosomes. So based on, I'll just give you one example, based on what you've learned in my class, if you get to metaphase, Sister chromatids are lined up in the middle of the cell. That's like the most visible stage when you look at these under the microscope. So if we have sister chromatids lined up in the middle of the cell for metaphase, I do not want to see the word chromatin utilized. We're going to use the term chromosomes to identify the DNA, and in parentheses, you should put sister chromatids. So you have to answer those two bullets based on what you learned from my lecture. Okay, as far as the other things, same thing. It's based on knowledge. Is there a nuclear envelope present? If so, is it disintegrating? Is it totally gone? Like what's happening? Is there a nucleolus? Okay, which phase or phases are gonna have the cell membrane? What about cleavage furrows, spindle fibers? Okay, look at the last one. Look at the last one, centrosome. Now centrosomes are not the same thing as centrioles. Okay, so listen carefully. Centrosome is the region at which the spindle fibers are gonna generate from. So if you're looking at a picture and you see like here's your cell membrane and we've got, this is where we know there's centrioles in here, centrioles in here, we've got our um, sister chromatids like laying down like this and I'm not drawing them very well, we're just kind of like doing it as if I saw them under the microscope because you don't really see sister chromatids but we know that's what it is. And we have this appearance, spindle fiber formation, okay, kind of like that. Then I know as a teacher, and you guys know as a student, there are centrioles in this area, but you're not going to see them using this microscope. It's not powerful enough. However, this cluster that you see right here, that is what a centrosome is. It's known that the centrosome is the region at which the centrioles in an animal cell are located, that's also the region at which the spindle fibers anchor into that. If this was a plant cell, they wouldn't have centrioles, but they do have a centrosome. Okay, so you're gonna label these structures if and only if they are present during a certain phase based on what you learn and based on whether or not you can see it in the microscope. Okay, so here's another view. I'm actually using the computer for this one. You can use any of these to draw your phases. But I just would like to point out, because um, you guys weren't here to hear me do this in class, but do you see this cell right there in this one? Both of those are in metaphase, but look at the different shape of the cell. Because one may be further along meta and almost to anaphase. Like those are two classic really good metaphase pictures. Okay, look at this one right here. Do you see how the nuclear envelope, what I'm pointing to with my pencil, is fully intact, right? That is an excellent example of interphase, but compare that to maybe this one right here, which you see the nucleus looks a little larger because the DNA is thickening, coiling, and condensing, and the nuclear envelope is disintegrating. So if you just compare this one to this one, this is a great comparison of what my pencil is on now, interphase, that's a great prophase. So I see interphase right here, prophase. This one's a meta, 
not pro meta. We, we have to find pro meta. And then if you look around, um, you may see different ones. That's a cool one right there. That's a cool one. Look at that. Okay, let me see if I can give you another picture that you could utilize as well. Any of these that you see in here that you want to use for your drawings, go ahead and do that. That's a really good picture of Anna phase. Can you guys see? I'm, I'm more um, concerned with you guys like learning the phases than so much of you finding them since you don't have a microscope. So um, I'm kind of helping you out here. But look at the black that you see right here. That's the DNA. So these are considered to be daughter chromosomes right here. And then these are daughter chromosomes because they're pulled apart from each other. But what I really like in this picture is you see where my pencil is, that's that dark area, that's centrosomes. These are centrosomes. But look at all the white space because now the DNA, the daughter chromosomes are being pulled to opposite sides of the cell. And you can see the cell is slightly elongating because it's in that anaphase state. So the destiny of this group of daughter chromosomes and this group of daughter chromosomes is to go to opposite sides to be in the two new nuclei once that happens. Okay, I'm gonna give you all one last view from the microscope in the classroom. Like I said, if you push pause, you'll see it a lot better, but ooh, these are really good. So you can have some cells to look at, hang on. Ready? There you go. That is so good. And here's another field of view. I switched it around a bit. 